different. This morning, I need two volunteers. Do I have two volunteers to help me lead the prayers? I'll do one. Carol I'll do and one. Jan. I'll do one, Mike or Jan. Okay, well, I've got Carol as volunteer one, and I've got Jan as volunteer two. Okay. Okay, okay. and let me do this. Is this size-wise? work for you? Does it need to be bigger, smaller? Bigger. Bigger. That's yeah. really tiny. Okay. It's hard for me to tell. Like, yeah, it's I, it obviously is different from what. Yeah. Oh, oh, good. No, too big. Back, back. That, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Yeah, that's good. So, okay. I invite you all to mute yourselves and participate in the worship. Uh, with Carol and Jan um, providing their voices for your voices. <clears throat> Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penance and faithfulness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their penitence and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word and to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now pray before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our savior, Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. O God of love, you are the true son of the world, evermore risen and never going down. We pray you to shine in our hearts and drive away the darkness of sin and the mist of air. We pray that we may, this day and all our lives long, Walk without stumbling in the way you have prepared for us, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. So for our reading today, I am going to stop sharing. I invite you to get in a comfortable spot. Um, something where you can listen to the story of Hagar in a whole new way. I know you guys read it yesterday. We're going to read it um, in a different way today, an imaginative retelling of the story by Rachel Held Evans and her book, Inspired. This was the last book she published before she passed away. Um, and so if you need to close your eyes or turn off your camera, whatever you need to do to just listen to the story, um, and I will read it to you. So let me read the story of Hagar. <clears throat> Most of the time, God does the naming, Abraham, Isaac, Israel. 
Just one person in all your sacred scripture dared to name God, and it wasn't a priest, prophet, warrior, or king. It was I, Hagar, foreigner, woman, slave. I do not wish to be remembered as powerlessness, as powerless, for power is the currency of men. But before the wilderness, before the naming, my station ranked me among the invisible. Dark skin and foreign tongue curried little favor in Beersheba, land of the seven wells, where warring tribes marked moments of peace by big digging together for water. I belonged to a woman blessed with all the things a woman wants, wealth, nobility, legendary beauty, and divine favor, but not the thing a woman in an unsettled territory needs, a womb that can carry a boy. Sarah wore her laugh lines like jewelry. She told stories better than anyone I've ever known. The desert wind sent her white hair dancing and carried her unmistakable peals of laughter through the arid atmosphere like rain. Old and young, men and women, slave and free, ventured to her tent for advice on breeding goats, arranging marriages, spicing foods, and offering prayers. And yet, in our world, they called this woman barren. I had the misfortune to belong to a woman who believed the wrong name. So she gave my body to Abraham. Long as I live, I will never forget how casually she informed me of my duty, rattled off at the end of a list of linens to gather and food to prepare. You will think me callous for not being more angry, more resistant to the charge before me, but bearing the child of a tribal leader, even in another woman's name, carried with it the possibility of more freedom, or at least a challenge to my expendability. The moment the old man rolled away from me, he never once looked me in the eye. I begged the gods of Egypt for a boy. If I survived the birth, I might even live to see him marry. Oh, I begged to every god in every language I knew. A baby's moment, movements don't begin as kicks but as subtle, enigmatic flutters. They don't tell you that. So I doubted right until the morning when, laying on my side after another night of fitful dreams, I placed my hands on my belly and felt the sudden, certain impression of a heel. No woman can prepare for the awe of it, the overwhelming surge of joy and fear. Instinctively, I looked around for someone to tell, but of course, no one was there. Then came a second nudge, this one longer and firmer, as if to say, don't you dare think yourself alone, mama. We're in here in this world together. My baby had yet to take a breath of air and already we shared a secret. That must have been the moment I started singing. Little fractures of the lullabies I remembered from my mother, a woman whose skin, I think, smelled of saffron and whose voice, I think, was soft and deep as a dove's. The memories of slaves are dappled ones. Perhaps I sang a bit too loudly. Perhaps I carried myself with more confidence than before. Your scribes will say I grew contemptuous of my mistress, but your scribes never asked for my view of it. The only thing I know is that for every day my belly grew rounder, Sarah's spirit grew stormier, a wind assailed reed about to break. A slave expects harsh words and withheld rations, but the physical abuse surprised me. Taunts turned to slaps, barked orders to mule whips to the back. I would not have fled had she not threatened the baby's life. I want you to know that. I would not have taken the risk of running into the desert in the dead of night with only a jug of water and some stolen bread to sustain me had I not feared the worst. Abraham did nothing, of course. My mute idols even less. Did they even notice? Could they even see? Your scribes will remember it as a silly woman's spat. 
an antidote to explain how this cursed land grew populated, but your scribes never carried a baby through the desert. Your scribes never knew the singular desperation of counting the hours from the last assuring kick. I took the road to Shur, the closest thing I knew to home. But as the sun rose like a great unseeing eye over the fifth or sixth mile, and the weight on my pelvis numbed my legs, I collapsed into the dust. Water gone, food regurgitated, blood streaking down my thighs. I waited there to die or to deliver or both. Who will find my body, I wondered, and what story will they tell of it? Then on the rippling horizon, a well, I crawled to it, plunged my face in. I think I must have fainted there or slept. All I know is that when I opened my eyes, a stranger stood beside me, a presence neither female or male, neither Egyptian nor Hebrew, neither safe nor threatening. And in a voice that sounded like my mother's spoke. Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? This stranger knew my name. I am fleeing from my mistress, I answered. What could I say of where I was going? Go back to Sarah, the stranger said, but do not be afraid. Not only will this child live, but through him, I will give you a whole nation of descendants, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, too numerous to count. I cannot tell you why, but immediately I believed. This stranger with the voice of a dove spoke with the authority of God. Your son will grow into a fighter, God said, a wild donkey of a man. But even as he struggles, he will survive. Call him Ishmael, for it means God hears and God has heard you in your misery today. In spite of everything, I smiled at the part about the donkey, for already I knew how that boy kicked. Every mama is something of a prophet. You may think a prophecy of struggle and strife would dishearten a pregnant mother, but a slave does not struggle or strive, a slave only obeys. If the prophecy was true, this meant my boy, my Ishmael would be free. With what force I could muster, I rose to face God, the brightness of the sun obscuring both our faces. I knew it was the God of my mistress, who she called Yahweh. But if I was to be the mother of a nation, I would need to give this God a new name. You are a God who not only hears, but also sees, I said, surprised by the strength of my voice. I have seen the one who sees me. So I named God as I named the well, Elroy, the God who sees. And it was a name remembered, for as your scripture reports, that is why the well was called Bir Lahai Roy. It is still there between Kadesh and Bered. Many of my sisters would draw from that well, the Hebrew midwives who defied Pharaoh by delivering the babies of slaves, the despised Samaritan who scandalized a town for daring to speak to the Messiah, the young women ripped from their homes in West Africa and shipped like livestock across the sea, the mamas who saw their boys lynched and the grandmas who saw their grandsons gunned down, the millions of black and brown people whose faces and names the world has forgotten, but whose God never failed to see, the fierce female prophets and preachers who rose from the ashes of their suffering and dared like me to survive and to name. I too would return to it years later when Sarah banished me to the wilderness again, this time with a little boy clinging to my legs. My faith like Abraham's was tested, but my faith unlike the patriarchs was not immortalized in Caravaggio's reds or Chagall's blues for later generations to view nor was it remembered in the litany of Hebrews or in the genealogies of your New Testament. Yet just one person in all your sacred scripture dared to name God. And it wasn't a priest, prophet, warrior, or king. It was I, Hagar, 
foreigner, woman, slave. Don't you dare forget. This ends the reading. Wow. Loved it. Mm. Certainly put a spin on what we read yesterday from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I forget what that's called when you come into a story and spin it like that. Midrash. What is it? Midrash. Midrash, that's right. I loved it. Well written. He is one of my favorite Christian <laughs> authors. I have read that book. I wrote down uh, a phrase, power currency of men. Boy, that was like, wing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the last sentence. Do not forget. Mm -hmm. Reminded me of the importance of naming. The names we give ourselves and the names we give other things. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Mm. I was really struck by her faith in the story that she could hear the stranger prophesy that her son would be free and that she could should could embrace that. Mm -hmm. Um I also wrote down voice of a dove because that's just a little whisper too, or it says to me, it's a little whisper. Mm -hmm. It's also a very soothing sound. I love the sound of a dove. To me, it's mm. such a wonderful sound, such a soothing sound. Yeah, Reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> I have morning doves at my bird feeders and they um, call to each other, right? I also had two doves at my bird feeder this morning. Oh. Be on the lookout here. I'm kind of intrigued by uh, his stuck on thinking about the just Hagar naming God, the God who sees and thinking about the struggle with all the evil we see in the world, all the disadvantaged people, all the, you know, the horrible things that go on in our world. God sees all this and struggling to think you know, how does God react to all that? How does God deal with, um, you know, the travesty that is uh, Ukraine now, the travesty that was Afghanistan, the travesty of the, the poor in our cities. And uh, so to think of a God who sees, clearly God sees all that. Uh, how does God move us? Um, God has no, uh, well, I'll leave it there. <laughs> it's a good thing God made a covenant not to wipe clean the earth with uh, a flood again. Because I, I could certainly see God being tempted to say, mm. time to start mm. over. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. Any mm. last thoughts before we move on with the rest of our prayers this morning? Okay. <clears throat> if you would go ahead and mute yourselves, everyone, except for Carol and Jan, and we will continue with our prayers. <clears throat> mm. Let us pray. Loving God in our faith, we pray 
for reconciliation between the violated and the violent. That we may rest in your peace. For generosity between rich and poor people everywhere. That we may share the abundance of your creation. For the growth of love between broken peoples and nations. That we may share, shape our common life as your kingdom. For mutual respect between immigrants and insiders. That we may welcome your image in all who come to us. For protection for the weak and humility for the strong. That we may serve others as you serve us in Christ. Let us offer our intercessions and thanksgivings to God, either silently or aloud. For Fran, Kathy, and Pete. For Alma, Maggie, Jeremy, and Sam. For Terry and Mike. For Clint and Sandy. Mm -hmm. For all the joys and concerns of our hearts. That we may live with gladness and trust. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out our offenses. Renew a right spirit within me. Wash us through and through from our wickedness and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within me. For I know my transgressions and my sin are ever before me. Renew a right spirit within me. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Renew a right spirit within me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. <laughs> 